everybody, this is John Burra from MammothInteractive.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a flat design button for a mobile game or a mobile app. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about what flat design is and what we're going to also do is show you, I'm going to show you how to actually do it within Adobe Illustrator. So you do need Adobe Illustrator. And Adobe Illustrator is a program uh, that makes vector graphics and these vector graphics um, are used to make uh, of course vectors and this is different from uh, images and the reason is is that images are made of pixels whereas vector graphics are drawn computer uh, graphics all right so the cool thing about uh, vector graphics and I do have another tutorial on this is that you can actually ex export them to scalable vector graphics and you can go ahead and program that but let's go ahead and let's create a new um, new project here so I'm going to go to file new and it's going to come up with this wonderful new document here now as a tip one thing I like to do is I like to name the the, um, the file right off the bat because otherwise you have a whole bunch of untitled uh, documents if you're in kind of a rush so let's call this a uh, flat design button okay so one of the things about flat design uh, buttons here is that um, flat design is a minimalist approach to computer graphics and minimalism um, is essentially less is more you try to achieve the same aesthetic with uh, with very uh, little parts. If you want, you can go and you can check out minimalism. But before we do that here, um, I think a slightly uh, more lengthwise button like this might work a little bit better. And if you go ahead and you push the artboard here, by the way, and in Adobe Illustrator, if you're coming from Photoshop, it's a little bit different than, um, than let's say from Photoshop where it's a canvas size. We have something called an artboard and you can move it up and down like this, but you can move it around. And if you push enter, it comes up with the artboard options like this. And uh, you can see that we have artboard one here. And what we'll do is we'll just make this simply 110. Okay, and uh, those points, by the way, so if I just push enter again, those points um, are like pixels, but they are vector uh, pixels like that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's push cancel. And to get out of that, you have now have an artboard here. Now, the easiest way to make a flat design uh, button is to just simply pull up a rounded rectangle here. Okay, so you can see here if you click on this button here, we go to rounded rectangle tool, and we're going to go all the way up to the top, and you'll see that it snaps very nicely to uh, to the image here. Okay, so there are two things uh, with any um, with any object here. Uh, we have the color, and let's just make this a nice blue color, and then we have the stroke color too. So we can see we have a green stroke now. You can change the, the width of the stroke, and I'm just going to make it more like that here. Now, of course, I'm not going to choose green. I'm going to choose uh, a darker blue or sometimes even a lighter blue. All right. And um, you can see that we have uh, 15 here. Now, you're probably, seeing, probably noticing that there's a huge problem with this. You can see that there is a black box here. And what this means is that this image will get cut off because when you export this image, you do have... Um, you do have a little bit, uh, what it exports is it exports the entire uh, within the box here. And as you can see, there's a graphics without. So the easiest way to get rid of that is to click on the stroke here and click on the align stroke into the middle button like that. And you can see that we have uh, that option here. And you can also change some of the options like this. And um, if you want, you can go ahead and change it. And sometimes it makes a difference and sometimes it does not, all right? So 15 is maybe a little bit too much in my opinion they be something more like that okay so uh, let's go ahead and you can see if I just click out of that we have this nice flat design button and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and click the layers tab here and you can see that we have different layers uh, here this these layers work similar to Photoshop and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add another layer and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in some text here, okay? Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and push play. Now, of course, this doesn't look good at all, so we have to go and change that. And what I'll do is one of my favorite fonts is this one called Bangers, okay? And we can go and uh, make it something like 72, or as much as you want, really. We can make it 144. Uh, let's just try that here and that's obviously too big but I'm just gonna go ahead I'm just gonna move it down and if you really want to uh, you can go and you can change the size of this text here because remember in vectors uh, again the all of the all the images of uh, what you see here is vectors meaning that you can resize it as 
much or as little as you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and you can see that when you move it down uh, up top here the, the size of the font changes. So uh, it's very good to do that. Now one thing that is really uh, seems really obvious uh, but no one ever does is that um, you can see that there is you always want some kind of border. Okay. Uh, anything computerized, there's, there's always a, a margin or a border. Okay. So the play here looks good, but I feel like we could, um, I feel like we can make it a little bit better here. Now, uh, my favorite graphic design tip, and if you take anything from this tutorial, is that if you make something instead of it being exactly white or exactly black, uh, if you make it an off-white or an off black, it does tend to pop out a little bit more. So I'm just going to make it a little bit of a gray like that. And of course, if you highlight everything, you can go and you can change the stroke as well. All right. So uh, we can change the stroke uh, to a dark uh, gray like that. Okay. Now you can do this or you can go and you can take it away too. Um, it's, I'll leave it up to you whether what you want to do. Personally, I just like things like this. Now here, we can actually, believe it or not, stop because, again, flat design is very simple. We know that this button is a play and we don't need any kind of shading. We don't, we don't need gradients, we don't need anything else. Now, um, there is a couple other things you can do though. So you can go uh, and add a drop shadow here. And uh, in order to make this drop shadow uh, look good, uh, you can go ahead and you can push preview. Uh, but in this case, uh, the, the preview isn't working. So you can add a drop shadow if you want. Now one of my favorite things to do, and this is this might seem really simple, is if you put like a small little uh, little shadings here like this. You'll see this a lot in games, not necessarily in apps, but you'll just put like some things like this here and you can see that that might work. Now if you go and you don't have to necessarily be gray, they could be like a lighter color blue or something like that. Uh, something like that. Uh, now that may look really simple, but it does actually work quite well. All right. And so that is how you make a flat design button. Again, flat design is to make something really, really simple here. If you want to, you can add in gradients, although a lot of flat design doesn't have gradients. All right. And the reason for that is um, gradients uh, do, can can kind of cause some issues when you're using it with HTML5. In any event, uh, that is how you make a flat design button. You can go to um, you can go to my website, uh, mammothinteractive.com, and you can go and check out. I have a huge course on flat design and how to make flat design in minimalist images. It's actually uh, quite uh, quite neat, and there isn't a course like it out there, which is actually which is actually kind of cool. You can uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook with the links below. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.